But it's only just begun. So what's going on everybody, it's your boy Questex and uh, you know I'm going to switch this up, this video is going to be a little something different, I don't normally do this, I don't really normally talk about my personal life um, on here, but uh, something happened to me the other day and I just wanted to share it, and then you know when it comes down to the irony and that with all this Colin Kaepernick and Michael Vick talking about shaving his head <laughs> to you know play the politics game. And I just felt compelled to do so, to talk about it, and um, here we go. Well, you know, I've been at my job for the last uh, about six years. Um, I've worked my way up through the ranks, um, and I'm quite good at what I do. Um, I work in the financial aspect of banking, and one of the things that I've always prided myself on being as a very responsible individual, somebody who's very focused, disciplined, somebody who goes to work and puts my best foot forward, um, just basically because of the way I was raised. You know, my mama would always tell me that I got two strikes against me, A, because I'm black, B, because I'm black, <laughs> you know, and, and that's just the bottom line. That's the fact, the truth about it, you know, I'm going to always have to work a thousand times harder than the next person because if I make one mistake or if I am just okay by white supremacy standards I am inferior uh, white white supremacy standards period I'm inferior you know I'm I, I have to always be number one so that I don't give white supremacy an excuse to knock on my door in my office and say hey you're not doing a good job. Hey, what's going on? I don't want white supremacy to ever come to me and say, is everything okay? And I'm pretty sure a lot of brothers and sisters know what I'm talking about. You know, you get that conversation from a boss. I remember, you know, when I was younger working at jobs, you get that conversation. Hey, are you okay? You know, I just really wanted to talk to you, you know, because... I wanted to make sure that you can do the job. You know, it always comes down to, it, it, it can never be that you're just having a bad day or something happened at, you know, on your way to work or something happened at home or, you know, something may have happened to a friend of yours and it just is really on your mind. It has nothing to do with whether you can do the job, but white supremacy always associates any sort of distress with black men in the workforce as your ability, it impedes the ability to do your job. You know, they'll for for Joey and, and 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 Dan, they'll say, hey, take a personal day. Hey, it's OK, Dan. It's OK, Joe. You know, come back, come back on Monday. You know, they, they have that concern for them. But for us, you know, we come into the workforce. I mean, we got a we, we got a lot of shit to navigate through as black men. So anyway, so I go into work. Uh, as I always do, and and, uh, and I work typical nine to five hours, which isn't bad. Um, you know, I could be one of those individuals that has to work on Saturdays or Sundays. A lot of Saturdays I work, but I'm usually working from my laptop and uh, laptop and on my phone. Um, and I always go that extra mile because there's always that thing inside of my the back of my head and there's in in my corner of my my ear. It just says, you got to do more. You got to do more. You got to do more. You know, you can't just work. They say you, you you leave work at five. No, 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 no. You need to work. Leave work at six, seven, eight, sometimes eight thirty nine. You know, sometimes working from nine to nine. Everybody is left, but I'm still there because I, I need to make sure that I am the best at everything that I do. Because if I give them that, that, that excuse or that reason to question me, I know that, I, that, that I'm not secure in, in my place of work. So anyway, my uh, job acquired another company 
And when you acquire other companies, you usually take on either some of their staff, definitely you take on their clients, and and the, the weight of more work gets put upon you. And that's that's just it's just the way it is. It's the facts of life. You gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta grind day in and day out. And I have no problem with that. Uh, but about two weeks ago, we had a company uh, party. And it was, it was more like a company get-together where you could bring your wives or your girlfriends. Um, they had, like, the grill of hot dogs, you know, <clears throat> steaks, all kinds of stuff. You know, they had a little water park thing going on for the, for the kids, if you had kids. And I was being introduced around by from my boss, who... Um, introduced me to one of the department heads that came from the other company. And, you know, I'm there, t-shirt. Now, I'm not, like, cop diesel, but, but I am a guy who works works out and takes care of himself. And I had, you know, my, I had my short sleeves on, right? Short sleeve jeans, sneakers, some shades, and a hat. You know, I didn't sit there and come down with my pants hanging off my ass. I didn't do any of those things. And, but I am, uh, anybody, some of the brothers in LDBC know, but I'm pretty covered in tattoos. Uh, very heavily. If if I'm in my workplace uniform, you're not gonna know. I mean, uh, I wear a suit and tie every day. So, you can't see any of my ink when I'm at work. But, that particular weekend, it was very hot. (laughs) You know, I'm not gonna sit there and and I didn't feel like I needed to. And maybe that's on me because I got to a position where I got too comfortable. I got too comfortable. I believe that, you know, recently I got another raise. And and it was great because, you know, I got my son. And he's on the way. And every day I see my, my lady and she's bigger and bigger. And I'm just like, you know, more and more excited. And with the new money that was coming in. And we just got our a new place, um, new house. And we're doing very, really well. She works in the school system. You know, she's doing her thing. Um, you know, we, we are where we want to be right now. And I got comfortable. I, it had to have been. I got comfortable because when I when I went to this event, this work event, um, it was designed to be as loose and laid back. You know, they serve drinks, alcohol, everything was there. But I've always known Christmas parties... I always say to myself, don't, don't, you, don't you take your black ass there and drink, because we can't do that. See, you, you always got to keep your head on the swivel. And I'm there, and, you know, I decide, hey, I'm going to have myself a bourbon. So I go to the bartender. I'm like, hey, let me get a, you know, bourbon on the rocks. He pours me a bourbon on the rocks. I'm sitting there. You know, my lady's intermingling with the other women, the wives that were there. And... One of the gentlemen who had who came, a department head who had uh, was a part of the company that we consumed, was also there, and he works very closely with our regional. And he, I saw my regional there. I go over to her and I'm like, "Hey, how's it going?" And this man, who sees me just with my tattoos, um, you know. Uh, immediately, immediately says, oh, does he work for the company's cleanup and maintenance crew? (sighs) There is nothing wrong with that. And I want to make sure that I'm very clear about that. There's nothing wrong with that. But it struck me. It hit me, you know, to... It did something to me that I thought in so many ways I was always prepared for, but to experience it, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about, but after he did that, I then proceeded to, you know, it was like, ha, no, I introduced myself, told him who I am, and he was like, oh, really? Oh, I, oh, I'm, you guys have probably been there when you, when you put a, put somebody, a white person on, on, on notice and, and you sit there and you have like a stern, uh, uh, 
stern position about yourself. And then he then proceeded to, oh, oh, I, I didn't know. I mean, looking at all your, you know, your stuff on your arm, I would thought you were one of the maintenance crew. <laughs> and, I, and I literally was like, are you, are you serious? Are you, to me, I was like, are you fucking serious? And you want to know how you know you're in a situation where other people understand and they know that the other person is fucked up? My regional proceeds to just say, hey, um, how about you um, go introduce, you know, your girlfriend to everybody? Um, and mind you, I've had dinner with my regional. Uh, we occasionally have had lunch when we're entertaining clients and stuff like that. So she's very close with, you know, my personal life. Um, and I walk away and I go and I go to my woman, you know, everybody, all the women around there are just so excited that, you know, I'm going to be a dad. And, um, so they're all around my, my girlfriend. And then I go to my girlfriend and I, and I tell her and I go, and I say, I, I sit there and I say, I'm like, you will not believe what just happened to me. I was like, this motherfucker actually thought that I worked on the maintenance crew because of my tattoos. And now I'm a generally I'm like I wear my head bald. I don't have that. I mean, at the most you'll catch me with is a goatee. Um, I was completely clean shaven on both ends that day. And I was just like. I was so taken aback by it. And then my girl was like, you want to leave? Because, you know, right now I have no problem with us just picking up and going. I was like, nope, we just got here. Um, I'm not going to allow that person's ignorance to get to me. You guys would never guess. But this particular individual proceeded to get information on me. And complained the how offensive my posture was towards him after he said what he said. Um, he said that I took an aggressive tone with him and that my tattoos offended him. Now, I need people to understand I've been with this company for years. I have never had a single complaint levied against me. And it just so happens that I'm going to have to work with this individual. Now, that was what happened at that event. Now, let's fast forward about two weeks now. We're, we're two weeks forward to, to what happened the other day. I'm in the office. Now, uh, if anybody worked in the office, you, you guys all know about CCing people on emails and stuff like that. And you have to be very careful and you can label certain emails as sensitive and security. So it will only go to the person that you want it to go to. But I'm in the office and I'm working really hard. And maybe this was done on purpose and maybe it wasn't. But I got forwarded in an email that was going around in which about my aggressive tone and my, my posture that I, I posed to this individual, it was going around that I have an anger issue. I have never. Now, listen, fellas and sisters, I have never once ever, ever said anything hyper aggressive anything to that point i go to work and i sit my behind down at my desk in my office i close the door and i'm crunching numbers and on the phone with clients hunting down money that is all i do and i kid you not an email chain that had been had gone out to all the higher ups i had an attitude problem and that my attitude was too aggressive And I'm not going to lie, and I'm going to talk about something that's very, very um, personal here, but I went home after, again, I clocked in that night. I clocked in 
I worked from like 9 to damn near almost 10.30 in the evening. And I and I got home and my lady is, is on the couch and I'm trying my best to like, you know, because I don't want her to have to deal with what what we what I deal with, you know, when I go to work. You know, I try to keep at least stressors, especially now we're coming up on a couple more weeks to go to my son is arriving. I don't want anything on her. And um, I go to just sit down at my desk and in my my place. And I'm just I'm just really at the point where that was it for me. Something snapped in me. And I said to myself, I can't keep doing this. And I kept looking at my woman's belly and I'm just like, I don't, what kind of man am I going to be for my son if I allow this to go on? If I allow somebody that I know is doing this purely because of who I am as a person and the color of my skin, because I have at least the white supremacists that I work with have never once come out of their face disrespectfully to me. They might have said it behind my back and oh, I'm sure they probably have. But they never once came up to me disrespectfully and said anything like that. But this person, and I just, and when you're in an email chain, guys, if you don't know, you see the conversations that have happened between other people you work with. And these are people that I have been to Christmas parties with and I've I've done everything in my power to be the utmost professional and courteous to. They actually came at me. Well, they weren't coming at me, but they were in this email chain speaking and talking about me behind my back in such a way that I felt I can't be here no more. The amount of money I brought to this company the amount of time I've spent and it's and again I'm not sitting there saying I've made a lot of money and I and I've done what I needed to do and I just said I can't do it anymore I can't I can't keep getting up every day and and driving into work and a commute of 40 45 to you know an hour commute in to work every day and I and feel so like I'm muzzled and so in a bind like I can't just say what I want to say and feel the what I want to feel. And I have to to make a change. Something has to be different. So I um you know I, I sought out the um the advice of of, of, of a really well knowledgeable brother. And I wanted to ask them about, you know, going out and doing my own, you know. And I did all the research because on the contrary to what people may think here on YouTube, I'm a bit of a geek in the sense that I like to know the statistics before I move or I make a move. So I, I was doing all of that. And, I've, you know, the statistics of what I do, an individual going out on his own are very, very slim. And it's very, very hard in this first year to two. Um... And, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, my son is on the way and I've got to make sure that money is pristine. You know, I got to make sure that uh, my woman and my son want for nothing. And the more I did this research and then I sought the advice of this uh, knowledgeable brother, it just feels right that I do this, that I go out on my own and I do my own. And I start my own business. Because I can't keep working for somebody else, working for the white man, working for white supremacy, because I'm, I, I feel like I'm less of who I am. And if anything like that makes sense to anybody listening, then maybe you understand what I'm talking about, but that's just how I feel. And I feel like now is going to be the time for me to do it. And I'm terrified about it, but I know this will be right for me. I know this will be right for my son, because I don't want my son to look at me and say, you know, when he's 15, 16 years old, he's about to enter that workforce, and he, he says, well, dad, 
what advice do you have for me? I don't want to do what was told to me as a kid. You know, I don't want him, I don't want to tell him, I want him to work hard, but I don't want to tell him to break, break himself against the job. Break his spirit against the job. Because at the end of the day, you will always be seen as nothing more to them as just an animal. As nothing more to them to just some, um, uh, some experiment. You don't want to be the good Negro. You don't want to be that. Be yourself. Now, maybe a lot of people don't understand what I'm talking about. and um, Maybe some people have had similar experiences like this. But I, I just kind of hit my wall. I'm done. It's time for me to, to do what's best for my family. And to do what's best for my spirit. But I wouldn't be me if, if I didn't do this. So... I guess I'll tell you what I did after doing all this research and what have you. I, I wrote this scathing email <laughs> and I uh, sent it as a mass thing to the entire company. You know, I, I played the, the politics route in the beginning of the letter and I, I wrote, you know, how I appreciate the opportunities that were given to me and the things that uh, what are important to me and uh, overall the experiences that I've had and the, the lessons that I've learned and the, the skills that I've gained and how I'll be appreciative of, of being provided those opportunities. But then I got to the nitty gritty. And <laughs> of course, uh, you know, I, I discussed it with my woman. I was like, listen, hun, I was like, should I do this? Should I press send on this? After, you know, I let her read it and you know, being the ever educator that she was, she was kind of twinkling with it, <laughs> talking about certain structures of sentences and stuff like that. But, you know, I love her when she does stuff like that. But, you know, when she looked at me and she said, baby, I got your back like you got my back. So I believe in you and I know that you can do this. And so I sent that email and I put in my two weeks. And why I, I decided to tell this story about what happened to me is because a lot of what what's going on right now with Colin Kaepernick and then what Michael Vick said, you know, I, I'm starting to realize that sometimes you could be doing what's not necessarily right for your soul. And not even realize that you're doing it. And I realized that what a that that dirty feeling I felt, that feeling of uh, of there's something missing in my life. The moment I stood up and I said what I said, the moment I sent that email, I felt whole. I it, I can't explain it. I really can't. So, when it comes to the whole Michael Vick thing, Michael Vick, he can't feel whole. He can't feel like a whole self. Him whole self. I'm telling you, he can't feel like himself. Colin Kaepernick probably lives with such of a such a freedom. Because I, I can tell you now, I'm experiencing it now. You know, I, I contacted a lot of my clients that, that I had brought in from the outside into the company and they're willing to to you know stand by me when I when I venture out and do my own thing. And that's a good thing. But it feels so much better that I'm able that I took a stand for who I am and for what I stand for truly, my principles. And I guess what I'm saying is, is that I hope that Colin Kaepernick doesn't shave his head. I hope that Colin Kaepernick continues to speak out and speak again, out against the social injustices that are done to our people day in and day out. And you know what? I hope that Michael Vick can realize that what he said was wrong. To realize that he he's not... 
He's not being himself. He's not living the way he should live. It's not his natural being, his state of being. I actually heard he actually tweeted out and tried to clean up what he said today. Why do you think that is? It's because he knows he's not living. He's not. He he wants to live with that freedom that Colin Kaepernick had the guts to stand for and live. And a lot of brothers in the LDBC do it, and I admire them for it. It's one of the things I look up to a lot of the brothers out here that they did it. And yeah, it was scary. But once they, they, they creeped into that door, they gained a sense of self and knowledge that I hope to obtain one day. And that I'm, I'm, I'm striving and working forward to do today. So, I didn't intend on it being this long. This is probably my longest video I've ever done. Um, you know, maybe I'll do other videos like this talking about, you know, just my per- myself personally. But I just felt like telling that story because I feel that it is important especially in this climate that we're in right now and I encourage maybe don't do it the way I did it (laughs) but I encourage a lot of brothers and sisters if you feel like you're in a job or in a corporate world and you feel like you just you the walls are around you and you can't just be you you always have to have this 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 suit on you know Get out Because at the end of the day They still don't appreciate you And they never will It's your boy Quest X I'm out, peace